So it'll be really difficult uh, for this afternoon's show, um, based in England, uh, not to talk about the UK election. That would be remiss. Um, it's been tough in the past to make defence a sort of top issue in terms of voting intentions. You know, that may have changed. I think you've got some some opinions on that. Uh, from a, you know, Labour is odds on to win at the moment. Uh, Labour is dealing with the uh, lingering remnants of Jeremy Corbyn, uh, CND, uh, uh, etc. Therefore, you know, UK's confidence that Labour would be a good uh, national defence, you know, institution. Um, and that may have changed. How, you know, we're right in the intense final throes of the election. How, how is that looking at the moment? Yeah, it's fascinating. As you say, we're trying to keep out of the uh, politics of this, don't we? But it, inevitably, I still struggle. We're war brewing in uh, Central Europe, actually raging in Central Europe, the, Eastern Europe. The, the worry is that actually um, are any of our military um, issues being taken to the voters because it's consistently a low priority. I even had, it's been throwaway lines at the moment, we saw Nigel Farage the other day say, I'd increase the army size to 100,000. You go, right, given that there's most of the policies so far have been gone through and they, they've been costed and they've gone they don't stand close scrutiny at all. And you start to wonder what the agenda is behind certain individuals. But going back to the polls, back in 2020, it's only, only four years ago, um, one of these international polls that was looked at about who is most trusted to look after defence. And the national poll said Labour um, was only uh, 11% of the population thought they could be trusted on defence, Conservatives 44%. And it goes to the point, I think, that you know Jeremy Corbyn, want to get rid of the nuclear deterrent. Um, Sir Keir Starmer worked underneath him and everybody sort of went, oh, that was a sound bite you want to use today. Now, all of a sudden, Labour's put a different approach. We're much more committed. And interestingly now, Conservatives have dropped from 44% to 21%. Mm. In other words, how trusted you are to deal with defence. Mm. Labour are 22%. Mm. They're more trusted now on defence. Mm. And I find that fascinating only because it's one thing what you say, it's quite another what you do. Mm. And the DNA of our leaders seems to me so important. And that's why it goes all the way full circle to President Biden, who, um, whatever one may think, here in election year, they're throwing some stuff around at the moment. He's the commander in chief of the biggest, most powerful military in the world. And yet the health issues and everything, he seems to be struggling with at the moment. Leave me gravely concerned. Mm. That is probably the most important thing that we want our leaders to do. Be consistent, robust, and have credibility in the defence sphere. Yeah. Well, I definitely don't want to put my toe on that side of the Atlantic. <laughs> what is a very ferocious situation at the moment. But it, it, it must worry a lot of people. I've heard a lot of sort of back talk that Anthony Blinken is actually running the show at the moment. I'm sure I'm going to get hit over the head by a lot of people telling me that's rubbish or that actually somebody else is doing it. Um, but hopefully whatever's coming out of American America is is a collective decision-making process. Very hard to think that's the case during an election year when everything is so, so polarised. But whatever happens in any of the elections, you only have to look at President Putin's been around for a few decades now you know, Chinese leadership around for a long time. They must be laughing their socks off, looking at how our uncertainty, how some of the candidates, you know, their credibility, their ability to be a credible threat, be robust. It doesn't feel like we've got the JFK of this, yeah. uh, of, the, of the world who inspired a nation. Where is that? Uh, and, and I'm not blaming America at all. It, it, it seems to be institutionally a challenge we're facing at the moment that neither of the two main candidates at the moment in the political elections seem to do well when it comes to leadership or character. Mm. And yet the very nature of what warfare is about, it's about deterrence, not big D, nuclear deterrence, but small d, that people know that you're robust, you're strong, that you have the military capability and you're prepared to use it if somebody crosses the line. Mm. That's about resolve. That's around commitment those qualities don't seem to be an overwhelming supply no, at the I moment. Agree. That is worrying. Um, and let's see, uh, from a Russia-Ukraine point of view for a second, let's see how the 
so-called spring offensive, which is slightly late, but may be happening at the moment from Russia's point of view, how that manages its way through summer, we then hit winter with all the problems. By then, of course, we'll have had the UK election, a lot of the European ones, the second time around have happened as well. We've got the November thing over in, um, in America. So maybe um, things will be a lot clearer and will give people an opportunity to collaborate. I mean, the Labour Party in the UK are already making overtures to Trump in America to try and get back on his side, just in case. Um, you talk about Kennedy, now the nephew... Uh, is is uh, making great strides. I don't know from a voting point of view, but if you're a Democrat, you'd call Kennedy Jr. a, a Republican. If you're a Republican, you'd call him a Democrat. So he, he has managed to sit in the middle of all of this and he gets into the war issue and the associated economic and political dimensions of it as well. So, you know, that's interesting. But I think that given one of the pillars of our national security is NATO and it's been pretty well advertised that a change of administration in the US might have profound implications for NATO. It does matter to us this side of the pond, what happens the other side of the pond. And I think it'll be really interesting. We're going to have to keep a close tabs on that one. Mm. But we're not going to get as close as to say who we want to win. No. Are we? No, okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs>